Hi guys, I welcome you all to day 37 of our anthropology lecture series. So on our 35 and day 36 we had already started the chapter kinship. So uh, before starting a quick uh, summary of the lecture 36 because that is again very important for this lecture. So to uh, yesterday and day before yesterday we, we had already talked about the word kindred which is also known as bilateral bilateral kinship group right so now these topics are very general uh, guys i'm not doing this again and again because uh, you can easily now read them and understand them and if i have to go in very detail about these very small topics like very minute so then the whole syllabus syllabus would suffer so that is why I'm not doing it in matlab, detail because we have already done it in the day 35 right so just a quick gentle reminder and then we'll move on to the topic of the day so we had already talked about for example if I have to give an example of this kind of uh, system to aap bolo Zulus of South Africa then in modern USA also for example uh, complex societies may what happens is that people often use this kindred system at the time of occasions they call them for weddings for you know different ceremonies right it's a it's a group that is based upon ego that is it's egocentric group and hence it is not permanent that means if the ego dies the kindred of that person would also not remain and it will differ from person to person that means the uh, the group of the person that is the kin world right the whole group of relatives would differ from person to person right it it uh, uh, in, it in incorporates both the affinal ties as well as the consanguineal ties right so uh, this is neither a property owning group right so that means uh, if there has to be a transfer of property it it is not going to depend upon the kindred it is going to depend upon the descent right the the descent groupings like unilineal or other descent groupings we had already talked about that so but what does the function it serves then if it is such a group which is not permanent which is neither a residential grouping neither a property owning grouping so what does it do is ba it is basically a uh, distributor group for example if if there is no uh, descent rules and if there is a person who dies then this this group can be used to to be distributed his property into right if the ego dies for example and now his belonging has to be given to somebody so now it could be given to his kindred first point is this then it acts as a group which regulates marriage because in your kindred of course the groups who are practicing exogamy for example they are not going to marry in their own kindred that means they are going to marry outside their kindred then after this they act as political uh, groups also that means somewhere down the line these groups these kindreds are tied through marriage or by blood na? that means they are social groups who have certain uh, you know firm ties together so that means they will act as a unit at the time of a war they will act as a unit at time of hunting and you know so all these activities together so this was all about the term kindred then we had studied about uh, lineages and clans and fratries so i'll just give you a quick reminder of that also see uh, we had already talked that lineage is a much smaller group than a clan right okay so let me draw a comparison here so it, it will be much better for you so it's a lineage first which is made up of many extended families then comes the clan which is made up of many lineages and then the fratry right so basically smaller group right it's a smaller group with known ancestry that means you can still trace your ancestor right yahan se the ancestry becomes unknown unknown and large and a larger grouping right so first point is this then uh, lineages can be a residential grouping because 
it is small na some families together uh, make a lineage right. So, it can be a residential grouping also, but it is not residential it is also not residential grouping. Then if we have to talk about other points then we can say that uh, they practice marriage regulations like again exogamy obviously uh, of uh, most groups do not marry in their lineage right. Jo unka jase hum north india mein bhi we say it like gotra exogamy right. So, but clan endogamy right many tribes marry in their clans okay and similarly it, it could be endogamy as well as exogamy. So, it is not like hard and fast it could be endo as well as exo right then totem becomes a very important thing when it comes to clan because because the ancestry is not known so they often uh, identify themselves to a totem right so this th this things comes and then you can put some examples of all of them right so lineage based tribes can be codes of middle east and newers of africa they are also and then clan based would be crow indians Crow Indians and then if you have to talk about fratri it is a it is a term which has come from a Greek word that is frater which means brotherhood. Many uh, tribes are divided into fratries and it acts as an important political unit right. So, you can say Hopi Indians are fratries. Okay? So, this is all about what we had studied right. So, today we are going to start with the uh, study of kinship terminology. Now, basically if you have to say why do we need to study the terminology? Terminology hai kya? What is it? It is basically calling kins with different names. That means for example, if I draw this family only uh, and if this is the person with whose perspective we are looking at things, this is the ego, then who are other people this would be the sister this would be the mother and this would be the father now he is not ego is not ca calling his father by the name for example his name is x or y the mother's name is y and the sister's name is z but he is not going to call uh, his father x or mother y right so, he calls it with a different name that is father, mother, sister. So, these are terminologies. Kinship kya hota hai? Your relations, right? Terminology kya hoti hai? How do you call them? Theek hai? So, kinship terminology is important because as we have already studied that in these uh, indigenous tribes or tribal groups, the importance of kinship is very high because they, do, they lack uh, organized political groupings that means they often do not have any political grouping. So, for them the only way or the systematic way of living is kinship right they, they tie themselves into a kinship groups. So, for them kinship is very important hence the kinship terminology is also very important because it tells us a lot about their uh, how they live what they feel how what their culture is right this you will see how kinship terminology gives us the idea about other things in the next slides ok. So, as of now we have said that kinship terminology is calling kins with different names which has different uh, which has different entities and roles attached to them. Obviously, for example, if I say the as soon as we say the word mother you know we have a stereotypical picture of what a mother is, what her roles are, what is what her status is in the family and similarly so for other uh, relations for example father, for example dada ji, nana ji, uh, mama ji, masi ji. So, all these terms when we use we have a stereotypical thought process about what this thing is. So, this is how these kinship terms have a a role attached to them, a status atta attached to them and with this we can know a lot about their culture. So, the first kind of study which was done on kinship terminology was by L. H. Morgan. He is the founding father of American anthropology and he initiated work on kinship anthropology. 
but his work was criticized by many like Kroeber, Rivers, Brown. So we'll study about it. So basically, kinship terminology by L. H. Morgan. So L. H. Morgan, he studied, he observed North American tribes, and in North America also he first studied the Iroquois Indians. Okay, Iroquois Indian was the name of the tribe which he studied, and then he came up with a system. Okay, we'll study about that. He he saw that in Iroquois Indians. There is single term used for more than one type of kin. Now I'll just show you the picture. Okay, I've just put the picture next. Uh, just understand it for now. That uh, North America Iroquois Indians ka study kara. He saw that one more than one type of name was used for more kins, right? Then he studied more societies and saw that this is not the only way of kinship. That means. uh for example they were using the term father for father father's brother and mother's brother also example mai aapko de rahi hu but this is not how every other tribe will operate na for example in north india to aisa nahi hota father ko hi father bolte hain father's brother is called either chacha or taya ji and uh, mother's brother is called mama ji right so there are different names so he saw that it is not the only one way of kinship terminology but many other terminologies are there so based on that he classified various types of kinship terminologies around the world in his book which was named as system of consanguinity and affinities of human families in 1871 the book name is important right so this was the basic terminology he came up with he believed that there could be two kind of terminologies one is the classificatory and other is the descriptive now just understand classificatory is just classification for example uh, if i say isme bahut zyada uh, differences nahi hote people are generally called or the collaterals i should say collaterals are generally named with only one name okay but in descriptive there is for every relation there would be another name for example agar father se bade hain to chacha ji agar sorry agar father se bade hain to taya ji agar father se chote hain to chacha ji then bua ji then mother sister would be masi so like that this is very descriptive because every relation is given another name but classificatory mein it's just for example every person where the mother sister would be or father sister would be called an aunt or uh, fa father's brother and mother's brother would be called uncle so isme there is no like very descriptive kind of way is there general way so isme bhi there uh, he classified three ways malian turanian gunavian right similarly in descriptive he said semantic aryan and uralian so now this you need, do not need to remember i just put it so that you understand what what kind of classification he came up with right right so now so basically he dis, he described this way we had already talked about iroquois indian iroquois indian may there was more than one kin who shared the same name now you see how jaise ye ego hai we are looking at things from his perspective now his father is known as also father father's brother is also known as father similarly mother is known as mother and mother sister is also known as mother okay so see uh, how more than one kin is sharing the same name that is father father mother mother and apart from that every other person is uncle and aunt right and and the person who is called father along with the father uske bacche are called brother sister like your own sister right and others are called cousins so this is how they use the names so ye thoda sa it's not fully descriptive it is not fully classificatory because classificatory mein everybody is using the same name descriptive mein everybody is is using the different name so it is somewhere in between because then yahan pe classificatory bhi hai because people are using same names also but yahan pe descriptive bhi hai because some people are using different names also so i i 
think this is a little tough for you to understand but please watch the video again i'm sure you're going to understand it so the basic type the the most basic type he was talking about was the mullian type in mullian types what happens lineals merge with all collaterals basically wo ye kehna chahte hai uh yeah okay just wait yeah in mullian basically kya ho raha hai for example this is father this is mother and then this is ego from his perspective we are looking at things and then this sister uh, this uh, lady has a sister this person has a brother and a sister too okay just example theek hai so now he is called father he is called mother mother sister is also called mother father sister is also called mother similarly father's brother is also called father and mother's brother is also called father so basically isme there is no uh, descriptive at all everybody is father mother and then everybody would be brother sister iske bacche iske bacche inke bacche they will all be mother, brother sister for example ye bhi sister ye bhi sister she is also sister similarly this is also just wait i was about to write father here this would also be brother and this will also be brother so it's very simple everybody is father mother everybody is brother sister so this is the simplest of all kind of like mullian type isme lineals merge with all collaterals and then north american type jo humne iroquois type padha that is lineals merge with some collaterals like father ka only brother is known as father and mother's only sister is known as mother whereas father ki behan is not known as mother she is known as aunt right so this is what was uh, described by lh morgan and then ye to ho gaye na classificatory jisme there is a little bit of classification but descriptive he said that every kin would be given a different name for example north indian north indians isme to everybody has a different name for example this is the ego then there is mamma papa dadi dada nana nani mami mama mausa mausi tau bua chacha fufa tai chachi so then every person has their own name only so this is extremely descriptive right so this was lh morgan and his kinship terminology so basically as uh, we know that uh, and if anybody who doesn't know this lh uh, morgan was a evolutionist now evolutionist kya hai kon the we are going to study it in the chapter 6 uh, that is anthropological theories so do not worry evolutionist basically had a notion that every uh, every society goes through three st stages that is savagery barbarism and civilization so this is how the societies become go from sim being simple to complex from homogeneous to heterogeneous and the complexity goes on increasing so for him the extremely classificatory types like the the ones we were talking about the mullian ones jo bilkul simple the they are like somewhere in a savage state then comes the north american the iroquois type jo uh, you know they were somewhere in the middle not extremely classificatory not extremely descriptive they are somewhere at barbarism and then extreme civilized would be descriptive terminology jahan pe every kin has a different name so this is what he believed because everything what which morgan had studied be it uh, religion be it uh, family structures marriages kinship terminology he has defined it on the basis of being uh, how complex they were from being simple to complex so anything which is simple it is for them at a savage state barbarism and civilization like that so this was highly criticized 
even though what he was talking uh, could have made sense but just because he uh, attached it to the stages of being savage or barbaric right this uh, invited a lot of criticism which we'll see so criticism was done by everybody like rivers brown uh, then crober right so uh, crober's uh, criticism was historical influences basically he was saying ki uh, it's not that language is not uh, uh, you know it's not about kitna descriptive it is you cannot say the thing which is descriptive is civilized because if they are not using different names for example wo father ke brother ko bhi father bol rahe hain and mother ki sister ko bhi mother bol rahe hain it can be a reason because they are close to each other unke beech mein there is no uh, differences for example in complex societies to uh, you know there is so much of distance in families itself ki uh you know you have to call them with other names but what if the mother's sister has the same position in the group right wo bhi aapko itna hi pyar karti hai she nurtures you the way like your mother so that is why she must have been uh, called mother right similarly chacha ya taya whatever it is they also take care of the child like the father so that is why maybe they are called they are being called father right so it is not about how language has developed and also somewhere uh, it is believed that there are differences in languages that means some languages are not so uh, evolved evolved in the sense that some people uh, some tribes do not have very complex languages they have very simple way of talking so that is why he says kinship terminology is not difference in uh, society as such it is differences in language because the languages are not that complex that is why they are not using such complex terminology and today the language has also become so sophisticated so complex that today everything has a different name because language is complex and not the society at large because society it's not about society it is about kitna language developed hai so this was one criticism and then brown believes that principles like levy rate could be a uh, reason for merging collaterals for example levy rate mein we studied in the marriage chapter levy rate mein kya hota hai the the husband marries the husband marries deceased wife's sister so jab deceased uh, wife has died and now he marries the other woman that is uh, her sister so maybe isko mother bulate the so now she is also known as mother so maybe is levy rate or soro rate culture ki wajah se aisa hua ki uh, you know it must have arisen from there so these were certain criticism to morgan's terminology then uh, even brown studied uh, kinship terminologies in his book america sorry african kinship system and he emphasized that kinship terminology is of utmost importance to them because obviously they lack social any political organization and their social grouping is highly dependent of kinship highly dependent on kinship system so kinship terminology says a lot about what kind of a society it is for example humne bhi humne bhi baat kari that levy rate culture ka isse pata lagta hai because if mother's sister is also known as mother सो so, इस इसका मतलब उस सोसाइटी में बहुत ज़्यादा बहुत ज़्यादा लेवीरेट कल्चर फॉलो होता है सो दिस इज़ हाउ यू डिसाइफर थिंग्स फ्रॉम स्टडिंग अ किनशिप टर्मिनोलॉजी सो एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट का काम यही है देयर वर्क इज दिस दैट थिक डिस्क्रिप्शन यू नो जैसे कि थिक डिस्क्रिप्शन वील रीड अबाउट वॉट thick description is that you are given just a minimum amount of information how much you can extract out of it how much you can know from that information is thick di- description right so he studied basically australian aborigines and uh, he said that they have the most intricate system of kinship and his book was named african kinship system so now the modern classification of uh, kinship terminology is based 
it is basically there are 6 kind of kinship terminologies which are today accepted ki these are 6 different kind of kinship terminologies that are there. Be, uh, from being simple to complex hum keh sakte hain uh, extremely classificatory that means there is no difference everybody is mother 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 father 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 and then brother sister brother sister like that so there there are no uh, differences so it's eskimo then hawaiian then iroquois omaha crow and sudanese i'll just show you the pictures and then you can just know about the differences first was we were talking about the eskimo to eskimo mein dekho only mother and father is there rest everybody's uncle aunt right everybody's uncle aunt and then apart from the own blood related person everybody is a cousin so extremely classificatory no differences at all everybody's uncle aunt cousins right then comes the second which is the hawaiian type this is the second this is the first one based on from classificatory to extremely descriptive pe ja rahe hum right so hawaiian is the second kind of system just may uh, mother and mother's sister is called mother and then father and father's br uh, brother is called father and then rest everybody is called and and also sorry i'm so sorry father's brother is also called father and then mother's brother is also called father so basically collaterals merging with uh, lineals right so it's me sub mothers hai fathers hai and then everybody's brother sister so again ye bhi classificatory type hai right so you do you do not need to mug this up this is just for your understanding how different societies have different kinship terminologies do not get bogged down by if you feel that this is very complex you just need to know that there are different kind of kinship terminologies around the world then there are very simple to very descriptive then if we have to go to very descriptive na to very descriptive would be sudanese which would be the extremely descriptive type jaise humne north indian wale ki bhi baat kari ki there is mother then mother's sister is known as mother's sister then mother's brother is known as mother's brother that means everybody has a different name then father father's brother father's sister then paternal cousin and paternal cousin may be paternal parallel cousin and paternal cross cousins so that means everybody has their own name and they do not share similar names that means collaterals do not merge so this was all about uh, kinship terminology also i could have finished the whole chapter today but then i i was thinking that uh, it it would be too much for everybody to understand so we will take one more class for this uh, chapter and tomorrow i will finish this chapter this this is an important chapter so i didn't want to rush everything and wanted to make you understand every bit of it so guys any problem any uh, uh, difficulty you face please uh, post in the comment section below i'll be happy to answer and i hope you understood and enjoyed the lecture if there is any doubt please go back watch the lecture again i'm sure you will be able to understand it and uh, please do like share and subscribe thank you